Now, welcome to the Troll Tracker. This will be the next part of our session. This is going to be an interactive session. We're back into table game time. You'll all need to be able to see the screens, and you'll all need to warm up your internal Sherlocks. Okay? We are going to talk through tracking trolls. And in fact, what we're going to talk through is how you can track a large-scale operation when it's working in multiple languages, on multiple platforms, in multiple places. The reason that we're doing this is because tomorrow, the DFR Lab is publishing a report on a persistent, sophisticated, and well-resourced operation that we've been digging into what feels, feels like a really, really, really long time. Okay? More details in the report tomorrow. But what we're going to do today is work through just one small case study from it. Because the fascinating thing about this particular operation we've been looking at is how widespread it was, how, how, how broad-based it was. We've heard a lot in the last 24 hours about Facebook and Twitter. And when we have these kind of conversations, people talk about the platforms, and they tend to mean Facebook and Twitter and maybe YouTube. In this operation, the activity on Facebook and Twitter was maybe 2% of everything that was going on. Practically everything else was on other platforms, in other places, in a lot of different languages. That's made it a real challenge to actually investigate. And so what we're going to do in this session is we're actually going to talk through the investigative process, and we'll get you guys to do all the work, because that's the whole point of interactives. They're the easy one to actually run, because you guys do the hard stuff. What we'll do, we'll put up on screen one single piece of evidence. And then together, we'll discuss where that evidence is going to take us. Rules of the game, if you have a suggestion, put up your hand. We'll try and come to you. I think we've got mic runners around the place. There are no silly suggestions. There are never silly suggestions in this game. So come up with a suggestion. We'll discuss it. And then we've, we're cheating, right? We know what the answer is. So we've got the slides set up. Hopefully, you'll tell us what the next slide will be. We'll go to the next slide. Everybody happy with those rules? Everybody feeling full of Sherlockism? <laughs> Perfect. Right. So the first slide. This is a post from a Facebook account that was taken down sometime in the last year. Full details in the report tomorrow. Okay? As a researcher, that's the only piece of information you have to start with, and that is a screenshot. You cannot click on a link. There are no links left because it's been taken down. All you have is this screenshot. The question we will be trying to ask all the way through this session, where else was this story posted? What other languages was it posted in? And can we deduce anything about the accounts that were doing the posting? OK? So first question, this, this should be a fairly simple one, right? This is a screenshot. Is there any piece of evidence in there that you could put in a search engine to try and find a little piece of this puzzle? There's a hand up over there. Yep. OK, so we've. Really nice idea. You can crop the logo. You can run it through an image search. That's a good one. Are there any other suggestions as to what we could do? That's not actually the one we started with. It's a good one. Here? Bingo. Yep. So, the, so the suggestion was, we can search for the Reddit account and the Reddit link. Yep, absolutely. By a strange coincidence, that's what we did. And we have an article on Reddit, very basic Reddit entry. What are the unique things that we see here that could get us somewhere farther? So we have a headline, body text, the same image. What else do you see is worth exploring farther? Any suggestions? And remember what we're oh, looking yeah. for. Yeah, go ahead. OK, well, if we go farther, uh, probably, but we already are on Reddit. So this is the place where we are. Where do we go next from here? Any other suggestions, please? Yes? The link down, down there. OK, this is very good spotted evidence. Though what we will do next, we will click on the username. Right. One of the things we're trying to establish still at this stage is whether there's a pattern of behavior and we're looking at the account. So we'll certainly come to the links, because links are wonderful fingerprints. 
A unique URL is, by definition, unique. So if you search it, you can find everywhere else that it's been posted. This may be a hint for this slide here. But the first thing we did in this case was to look at the actual user account in question to see, is there a long posting history? Has it posted other stuff? What was interesting with this account, that's its account page. That's all we have. It's only done one post. And if you look on the right-hand side, it's cake day, April the 22nd, 2019. That's when the account was created. The actual date where this post was, was published was April the 22nd, 2019. That's an interesting data point to bear in mind. This is an account which was created one day, posted once that day, and never posted again. Okay? Bear that in mind for later. But again, are there any useful clues somewhere in that that we could stick into a search engine and see where else the story is going? Uh, you've had a go already, so let's see if we, we have a Sherlock at the back. Uh, the, mic's, the mic's just coming. I was just wondering if you could put in the exact text, because sometimes the exact text will pick up perhaps. Bingo. That, that's exactly what we did a little bit later on. Um, so that's, we'll, we'll, we would need to jump slides for that one. But you're absolutely right. Chunks of text are great. Uh, any other unique fingerprints in this? Uh, hang on a sec. Uh, verified email. On Reddit, that just means that they've checked that it has an email address. So. It doesn't tell you what your address is. But we had an idea here. Uh, we can try to uh, search the URL on other platforms. Bingo. What happens if we stick the, 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 the search URL, the, the, the URL into Google? This is what we get. So what we have here is just one entry. But Google allows us to explore more. So if we click on search image, we get more. And what we have here is a couple of interesting points. First of all, we've seen that we've now got the same image in four different locations, right? Everybody happy with that? How many different languages have we got? Two different languages, OK? Spanish speakers here? Yeah. What do you think on? the Spanish language text compared with the English language text at the top? Is it basically a translation? Yeah, it's, it, it's close enough to a translation. So what we're actually looking at is the second hit down IRA in, in lists, et cetera. That's the original headline from Reddit. Everyone agree? Yeah? The other three headlines are of a different story, which is using the same image. But when we look at the, the three headlines, it's an English version and a Spanish version of the same story. So we've just built out from a single image on a single post to the same image being used in a selection of different posts in at least two different languages. So now we've moved just from an English language operation to an English and Spanish operation. OK? So the logical, what do we think the logical thing to do would be? We haven't seen anything on this second English language story, the top link. So what do we think we might do? Sherlock's, we click on the links, right? What happens when we click on the link? It leads us to an article on S South Africa Today. And again, we see the same image and some unique fingerprint that could lead us farther. Could you spot that, what it is? So one thing that we have here is a headline, and the next one, it clicked so too quickly, is another link that could lead us somewhere else. So everybody happy with that? We have a new headline. And again, the suggestion from over here, from, from the Sherlock at the back, if you have a headline, it's a really useful search term, because the whole point of headlines is they're meant to be pretty unique. So if you find, we found it time and again with this network, if you find a particular head, headline, put it in quotes, put it into a search engine, you'll see everywhere, well, the first result will be Google's selection of places it cropped up. At the bottom of the page, you'll get, do you want to see it absolutely everywhere it appeared, and you click on yes. At that point, you will see everywhere else that same headline was reproduced. We'll come to the point further on that it's also a useful sanity check 
to do the same thing with a line further down the article. Because quite often you'll see information operations will change the headline. They won't bother tinkering with the text. But what you do is you put the headline into Google, and there you see we have the same headline again, but this time it's on Medium. So, and the second hit, just below it, that's the author account. So what do we think we might consider doing at this point? Hands up if you think maybe looking at the author account would be a good idea. Yeah, hand up over there, over there, yeah. Should we have a look at the author account? And we have the author account. What's um, interesting about this account, like we saw it in this case before, what is it? And this, this is the full profile page of the author account. Yeah, that, that's all this account has. That's all that Medium has on this account. Exactly. Yeah, just one, uh, one post per account. That's what we see again. Probably created just for one publishing time. Exactly. So one post. Let's go next. And the URL that we saw before leads us to other list of uh, Google search results. So you remember jumping back a couple of stages. We looked at that particular article, and we had a new headline at the top, and we had a new URL at the bottom, right? So we've now searched the headline. We've established we can trace it back to a Medium account, which only ever posted once. Medium doesn't give you the creation date, but all the other platforms these guys were on, they create it, they post the same day, and then they vanish. We've now gone back to that post. We've, we've got the URL that it included, and we're now searching for that. And what's that going to show us? Where else were people posting to that URL? And what's really interesting here is, again, what languages can we see? Hands up if you can see English on that page. Yep. We've got English, German, that's right, and Spanish. Yeah, so we've got Spanish here. We've got German here. And again, for the linguists in the room, it's the same headline in both. It's just a different language. So here we are again looking at a single piece of content which has been translated into multiple languages. Okay? And what, where it gets really interesting is that's just the first page of Google results, right? There were quite a few pages. And if we go to the next one, we're in French as well. OK, so we've now built out our language portfolio. We've kicked off in English. We've been through Spanish. We've now hit German and French as well. So again, what do you think we would do at this point? Give us a sense for the, for, I, mean, I know where this is going because we know what the next slide is. But, but what would your stages of, of investigation be at this point? Let, let's have some suggestions from the floor. You don't have to have all the answers, but just tell us one thing we might do. Yeah, we'll, yeah the, the image will, will come down to if we, if we still have time. If not, it's in the report tomorrow. Um, so yeah, the image is part of it. Uh, Mike, sorry. Yeah. It sort of fits in with certain patterns that you see of right-wing pushes in multiple languages that are anti-EU. Uh, it does. It fits in with all kinds of things. More in the report tomorrow. Um, but basically, remember, what we're trying to do at this point is establish what the pattern of behavior is, how many places were these stories posted, how many different accounts were involved. So what we actually did at this point was we went, we went to each of these, and we looked at the pattern. Okay? Reddit, they used repeatedly. Homment in German, they used repeatedly. For the purposes of this exercise, the most interesting one was French, because we hadn't seen French before in the mix. So what we did was we went and looked at the French post, which is here. And how this post is different from those that we saw before, the one-shot account. What do we see? Long, what, longer? It has more, more text in it. More than one post, exactly. So we, uh, again, see the very link that we were searching before. And 
here's the archive section. So there is at least one more post posted on this account. Going next. And this is where it gets interesting, because normally this operation would only ever use single use accounts. There are a couple of very rare exceptions. This is one of the rare exceptions where they actually used the same account twice. So what we did, having looked at that first post about Brexit, we looked at the second post that it had been doing. And what we have here is you've got a headline. Again, we can search for that headline. We can translate it into different languages and search it in different languages. But again, we also have an image. And this is where the image searching comes in. Do you see top left, there's a letter, or what purports to be a letter. This operation used forgeries a lot. So we've already got the answer here, so we'll, we'll skip this one. We can actually look at that image, right? We can search for the image. And what we get is a letter ostensibly from a member of parliament to another member of parliament talking about the information war they're going to launch against the far right. If we reverse search it, of course, we get a load of results. One point, OK, reverse searching letters is a real pain because you get so many false positives because all letters look pretty much the same, right? So some of the, po some of the results here are nothing to do with the operation, OK? We are not implicating Shaftesbury School in this operation. It's just that they write letters too. But as Nika will tell you, there is more here. So we, what we got, the actual result of the letter that we saw before, is uh, English version. European election rules get altered. Uh, we get, uh, again, South Africa today reappearing. Um, we have the same uh, title translated in German. And we have another version in German that reads somewhat differently. And it's, it leads us farther. Yeah, so remember the pattern. We're trying to work out thing, where things are situated, right? So now we've got what looks like a new story in German. All those other results on Google, they were translations of the same thing. Here again, we have a different story in German. And we've got a couple of things, the kind of things we know we can look at. We've got the letter in there. We've got a link to a Medium account. Um, I'm suspecting it wouldn't startle anyone too much at this stage if we said, look, we looked at that Medium account. It only ever posted once. Shock horror. Um, so there are, there are clues that we would look at anyway. But if you think about what we have on the screen, we also have this headline. If we're looking for multiple language variants of the same story, what, why, what might we do with that headline? Translate it. Did I hear you say? Yes, exactly. So German, Europawahl Krieg gegen die Rechten, is European Parliament uh, war against the right. OK, European Parliament elections. So what happens when we stick that in Google? Bingo. War against the right generates us a few results. Uh, and let's click South Africa today again. And we, what we got here is this article. So again, I'm just going to actually flip back one slide. Sorry, because there's something which just occurred to me. If you look at the sites they're posting on, if you've been looking at this throughout, you may start seeing a pattern there. Right? South Africa Today has come up repeatedly. Indie Bay has come up a fair few times. Homment has come up a fair few times. And actually, one of the fingerprints of this whole operation was where they were posting their stuff. And it's been a really fascinating investigation because they're trying to hide by using single-shot accounts, but they're using them on the same networks, on the same platforms. And at some point, and this is something we could discuss, when does it become the point that the fact that they're using a single-shot account becomes diagnostic of this operation? Right? I mean, the whole point is you can't trace it, but if you're doing the same thing every time, then you can trace it. This is a really interesting one to discuss offline. Um, but flipping forward again, so now we have an article. There's actually quite a lot more of text underneath what we've shown you there. And so therefore, coming back to the point which is over here somewhere, what happens if we clip out a little bit of the article and stick it into Google? That's going to show us the next link in the chain. Right? That will show us if there are other articles which reproduce exactly the same language. And if we do that, we get results 
with the very same headline, though look that we uh, inserted like a section from the body text. Uh, it all appears in English, and we have the usual suspects. Like one is the medium account, uh, another one we see uh, in the eBay, and South Africa today is reappearing. So let's hit one of those. And yet again, we're back on medium. And yet again, if we look at the user account which is involved, yet again, we're on a single shot account. Medium, single shot account, it's based on a forged document. Are you starting to see the pattern here? Yeah? Now, we're going to finish in one minute so, so that we're out of time for the actual explanation. But this is the way we have been working on this thing for what feels like forever. Okay? This is the way we've been thinking. We're always looking for fingerprints. Sometimes the fingerprints are a piece of text or a URL. Sometimes the fingerprints are actually the pattern of behavior itself, always using single-shot accounts, always putting them on the same platforms. But this is the kind of thinking that we've been doing. And if you think about it in terms of Sherlock Holmes, you're finding the fingerprint, but then you're working out where else does that fingerprint show up. And that will move you from A to B, and then you've got a second fingerprint. And you can actually build up all the fingerprints on the hand. So again, for more information, it's all in the report which is coming out tomorrow. Keep an eye out on Twitter. We will be pushing it out there. That is the wrap for this session. There's now going to be a coffee break. And because we love coffee, it's a half hour coffee break. Okay? Please take your empties off the tables and bring full ones back. It just makes life easier for the housekeeping. And we will reconvene in half an hour. So thank you very much.